said to me, my grandfather walked 10 miles to work every day. My father walked five. I'm driving a Cadillac. My son is in a Mercedes. I said my grandson would be in a Ferrari. But he said my great grandson would be walking again. So I asked him, I said, well, why is that? And he said to me, tough times create strong men. Strong men create easy times. Easy times create weak men. Weak men create tough times. He said to me, many will not understand, but you have to raise warriors. As a guy that grew up in the hood of Detroit, Michigan, no true words were said. But with all that being said, I'm going to let Alex do the intro, and then we're going to come back to it. Welcome back to the Passive Money Plan, guys. My name is Alex. That's Kirby. Um, so this is a this is an interesting video. Um, you made a lot of deep points. So what what do you what do you have on this? So I can try to understand better. When he said that hard times create strong men, that's the one. Hard times create strong men. That's the truest thing ever. And this is my investment philosophy all day, every day. And Alex, I know you don't have this philosophy. You know, you you were smart. You was way smarter than way smarter than me at that age. But my philosophy is always this. I grown up and lived in third world conditions, or I grew up in the hood when I'm I'm not talking about the rap hood where everybody, you know, everybody from the hood. I mean the hood hood. I mean roaches, roaches. You know, I, I was naming them. I had so many, you know. I mean, it was like my cousin. That's how many was in the heart. Um, but those hard times, I survived those hard times. Um I, you know, grew grew from those times. I learned a lot during those times. I elevated myself from those times. But the thing is, in my investment philosophy, like I was saying, is if the worst thing that can ever happen to me, if I take this risk and then I go broke, if I go back to those times, you know, if I go back to the hood of Detroit, I just survived that. I lived that. I've learned that. I I know I know that way of life in and out. If that's the worst thing that can happen to me, then I'll be all right. But to the gentleman's point in the video is once, you know, I elevate myself out of this, then my son never knows what the hood of Detroit is like. So he will, if I'm creating a baseline, he's creating a better life. And then his kid really won't know. So remember when we talked about a couple of videos ago about how, you know, generational wealth, in America only lasts about three generations. That's why. It's because they never knew. They don't have the stories from me if I go three generations now. I won't be able to talk to my great great grandkids to tell them what it was like. How to appreciate money and stuff like that. They will be born into it so they will think that, oh, this is the norm. And so more than likely, they will do something crazy and mess it up so the next generation will I have to start back over at zero. So that's why it resonates with me. Like, there's no, I, I never had a generation in my family from the beginning to the end of my family lineage that ever had money. It's always been grind, 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 grind. So me, I just said, I'm going to elevate myself and learn something different from what the previous generations learned to be the sacrificial lamb, to do everything it takes to set my offspring up to do something better than what my family has seen before. But it's true, and you see it all the time, especially in professional sports. In professional sports, you always hear about the guy that came from nothing, came from nothing, came from nothing. And they work harder than the people that came from something. I mean, I can give you plenty of I mean, you know, additives or examples of stuff like that, but they have nothing to lose. 
if the worst thing that's gonna happen to them, they taking the risk, they taking the gamble to make an interception, to make a touchdown, or doing something outside the box, they have nothing to lose because the worst thing that can happen to them is they go back to what they're used to, and they survive what they used to. So if you if you can survive what you're used to, if you take a gamble, and the worst thing that can happen is you go back to that, then really are you taking a gamble? That's what you've known the whole time in the first generation of things. Speaking of myself. And that's why this video really resonated with me. But go ahead. I'll let you speak on it. That makes more sense when you put it that way. Um, I can understand that. Now, I didn't grow up in Detroit. I grew up in Tampa. Not the best part of Tampa. But um, I can see how that happens when, uh, and I see it a lot with um, immigrants. And especially where I work, I talk a lot to uh, or like if there's new drivers at work, for instance, there was one who he's very young, but he's Cuban. And I asked him, you know, how did you get to the States? Not trying to be rude, but a lot of the Cubans that are here, you know, kind of dashed out of Cuba during the whole revolution, made it out just in time. And now it's gotten progressively harder and harder to leave Cuba. And as it's been harder to leave Cuba, I just simply asked him, you know, how did you get here? And he had mentioned, or he talked about a story where he had to go from, I think it was Cuba to Colombia up through the, um, they call it the frontera, which is like the jungle basically between Colombia right. and Panama. And then up there you go through Central America, then you have to go through Mexico, cross the border. And um, it's the same thing that a guy that works right behind me in the office, Ed is his name. He uh, he did the same thing. He's from Peru. And during the 80s, during the uh, the uprising of communism in Peru and the bombings and uh, assassinations and stuff, uh, his parents basically sent him upwards, but he had to do the same thing. And during in when you cross from Colombia to Panama, there's it's controlled by narcos, by communist guerrilla forces. And um, Ed was saying that he tells his kids because when he got to the States, finally, he was sleeping on benches. He was homeless. And, Ed, you know, Ed, he's not a rich guy or nothing. But um, from what he has made out of is he's very successful in where he's at and uh his uh he tells his kids um like you don't understand what i had to go through and so it's it's interesting sure. when you put it like that because you know a lot of uh these immigrants have to take those risks and a lot of them die on the way up because of uh you know guerrilla forces see you they just kill you so it's uh it's interesting to see these uh um People like that, at least those are the ones I've met who have gone through hardship and now they have kids in the States and their kids don't have to go through what they your parents went through back in communist countries or third world countries. And now they're here and they're born in the U.S. and they have luxuries. Yeah. And and that's and I'll give you an example. I'll give you a perfect example. So. Like I like I've stated previously, I came from Detroit, you know, it was, you know, the, the roaches and everything. And then my wife, my wife immigrated here from Albania. And then the, the first place, of course, there they were super, super broke, super poor, and they had to live, you know, in substandard housing, you know, they had, you know, roaches and stuff like that. And then you know, if anybody's been following this channel and followed our journey, I talked about how I left the, you know, property that I had in Texas and then I moved to a apartment building that was half the price on a monthly payment. And then they had roaches. So now, now you fast forward to now I have my younger son. My younger son, he don't, he didn't have to live that life. And now he see a bug in the house. It could be some just, you know, how in Florida ants or whatever come in the house. He goes, oh. <laughs> you know, he's he's all he he ain't about that life. He ain't about that life. It ain't normal for him. So 
I just see it from <laughs> those perspective of, <laughs> of <laughs> hey, all right, you don't know what it is. You damn sure ain't gonna be able to teach your son what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, of course, as he get older, he'll you know understand to squish the bug or whatever. But when you look at it, it's always something that's so distinct. Three generations from now or two generations from now, they won't have a clue what the hell it is. And that's that's something that will will resonate when it comes to them understanding and they will think that, oh, this is the life that we're supposed to have. And then they will do something foolish and then they will end up uh, blowing the bag. As they say in the hip hop community, they will end up blowing it. And that's that's something that's very, very cognizant on my mind. And that's, you know, that's why I set up, you know, things and entities the way I do when it comes to investments and things like that. It's because I'm trying to I'm trying to prevent that from happening, even though it will be hard to do, but it's it's a necessity. It's a necessity that I have because I knew what the ground roots was like. I know my kids, kids, kids won't know what that's like. And I have to do it. I have to have the portal to think of what's going to set my family up for success. My family after I'm gone, way after I'm gone. Because if I don't, then the gentleman's right. And most and and 99% of the cases, he's absolutely right. But I have to figure out how to, you know, maneuver and make sure that's not the same situation in my household, which it possibly could be if I don't do it right. That's interesting because um I see like I saw like uh because I don't keep up with this stuff, but I, what's the guy's name? Prince Harry or something? The England prince? Right, right. I, I right. had seen the other day that he was uh, a royal marine, I think it was. Or he right. was in the military. I think he was actually deployed in Afghanistan. So it's it's interesting to see, like, some points on or some views on maybe how, because I'm not sure if this is exactly how they've done it, but say the royal family has kept their generations in the military and disciplined and um like you say you're trying to do with your son where you're trying to teach him as much as you can on being strong and uh because only f very few families have been able to do that for dozens of of uh generations like yeah and and so and so like harry he he actually that so like Harry, he he actually served the other the other British royals. They never served; they just get the title. Mm. But he actually served. Actually, I was in Afghanistan when he was serving there. Um, and then the thing is, is I don't think he lost his way. I think he's seen that he lives better than the normal. And let's not get it misconstrued. The family itself didn't do nothing to get in that position. They just was born there and they just, and their grandparents just happened to be royals or whatever. But, but what I'm saying is he's seen light in a different way. And I'm not saying he's right. I'm not saying he's wrong. But that's all it takes for a final dynamic to be thrown out. You can get somebody, and I know I'm going to get hate for this, tree hugger or whatever and think that oh I shouldn't have all this money because of this and that but the thing is I'm generation alpha I'm the first generation that's trying to build the building block the generations after me should be understanding that the sacrifices that I had to make to get you in that position is what put you there not because oh everybody's looking up to me look at your lineage of where it came from and that's the thing, especially in the Western world. I mean, now you're seeing it with the royal family, but that's how it is in most most businesses and most family dynamic uh, operations or setups. Is it's you know once you go a couple of generations, because I mean, this family here, when we're speaking of the royals, they've been in in power or in their you know situation for hundreds mm -hmm. and hundreds of years. We didn't try to get the three generation, you know, so. But they have to look back to what sacrifices that the beginning made 
to justify where they're at. If they don't look back to where the genesis of this all started at to realize why they should be where they're at, then you're in a fruitful fight to, to go on. And that's really how it goes in this dynamic. And it depends on political affiliation and things like that to justify it. I mean, if people don't forget where they came from. And, you know, my favorite motto is if you don't study history, you're bound to repeat it. And that's what it comes up to. So with all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.